Well, you know, let, let's start with a couple things. I went ahead and put some double A's in there for you. So you have double A's. And I did assemble it, but we haven't calibrated it yet. Okay. So the battery's charged, but let's talk about charging the battery for a second. Uh, this charger is awesome. To charge the battery, put that in there and you plug the plug in there. But to charge the battery, not only do you need this part plugged, but you need this guy in there like that. In the middle one. The only one that it fits. Okay. 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 So with all these connected, the light comes on and blinks green. You want to charge it at two amps on light bulb. Then it takes, if the battery's completely dead, it'll take an hour. Um, That's not a DC. Yeah, it's, it's AC. Oh, okay. It is AC. Yeah. The, the the DC charger, you, I have the, the high tech that you bought. That's uh, that's much better. But this one works. Okay. But that's not a. Uh, that needs AC too. Correct. Correct. Yeah. No, no, no. It's the AC DC. Let me grab it with this. Oh, it's got batteries in it. Uh, not batteries in it. You can use them on your car. Oh, okay. This is just the DC version. Sorry, this is just the DC version. So you can clamp it onto your, onto the battery of your car. So you have an AC charger there, and this is the DC charger. Okay. Oh, oh this is DC only. Yeah. Oh, you can't do AC. Correct. Oh, if you, uh, if you. How much current does that take? Um, it only takes the current that the battery will draw. So you would, on a typical car, you'd probably be able to do 40 or 50 charges before like you need to um, pull a power supply. Even yeah, a 12 would, volt car charger. 12 volt power supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's only going to pull. It's only going to pull two amps charging this battery. Now you charge a big monster five cell, or you charge four. It's going to go two, four, six, eight. It's going to pull two amps per battery. <laughs> because this is that's exactly what you charge a 2200 at is two amps which is just like what this thing says. Two amps. Yep. So I guess you could put a signal connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some guys do. Uh, many of us do. Um, not only can you use this, not only can you use that, but you can also use like if you've got a car charger, like a pet boy style automotive 12 volt charger, that'll drive this. Yeah. Cuz those go to 10 or 12 amps. The difference is is that the AC version of that charger, the AC is another $150 more. So they're available, but it's another 150 bucks. How much was this one? Um, yeah, it was like one. It was like a, retail is 189. It's 250 for the. Yeah, 279. 279 for the AC. Power supply. Exactly. Which is why everybody buys the 12 volt version. I see. Okay. 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 So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll, I'll put it in and we'll talk about the red lights. Now, this table is misleading. Okay. But this table is just like that table where there are four big metal poles down here. So when you come out to, if you set this up on a metal surface or something like that, you might get an error. So, and I'll show you what the error looks like, but I always kind of do it out to the corner here. Okay. So there's no... Good advice. Okay. Yeah, good, good call. You get two warnings out of this. The warning I'm getting now is telling me I turned it on and I don't have zero throttle. That's the same warning I would get if the battery were out. If you're flying and you get low battery, you get the beep, 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 you get the same tone. So that just told me I had to put my throttle down to zero. Oh my gosh, yes, I, I go nuts. So put this bugger in there and plug it in. But I won't close it up and we'll talk about the lights. You get three pieces of information from the light in the blink. You get the first blink to tell you what mode you're in. The second series of blinks tells you how many satellites you have. And the third blink, uh, I'm sorry, first blink tells you if it's warm, second satellites, third tells you mode. So I get a series of yellow, there, I'll start first one. It's a yellow blink, red, then yellow again. So the yellow blink, first one tells me I'm in Addy mode. So if I go to GPS mode, the first blink will be green. Bink, there it is. Next series of blinks were the, the red, which are already gone now, because it was acquiring satellites. As it acquires satellites, you may have five red blinks, then it'll go down to two or three red blinks, then the red blinks go out. The fewer red blinks, the more satellites. So what it's telling you now, because we have no red blinks, is it sees everything that's up there. What it can't tell you is how many it's seen. So on a day like today, although it's seeing everything it can see, it may only be seeing three, five, whatever. It has to see at least three to get the light to go out. 
So the fact that it's out tells us we, we got everything we need and it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. The difference becomes with, with more satellites, if you have three satellites you can have you know position hold. With eight satellites, you get a stronger position hold. So what I tell people, it's like flying in a bubble. As you're flying up there, picture this thing in the middle of a bubble. The more the satellites, the smaller the bubble. And it's just gonna move around, you know, as the wind blows, it'll move around within that bubble. If you've got all your satellite locks, that bubble's gonna be nice and small. If on a day like today where it's, you know, it's moisture that blocks the uh, satellite signals. So when the clouds are really moist or, or you know, close to high humidity or something like that, your bubble might be a little bit bigger. But it's still gonna hold, it's still gonna work because altitude hold is a barometric pressure sensor, not just GPS. So it may drift a little bit more with weak satellites and if the wind's blowing, it may push out a, a meter before it wants to come back, but that's how many satellites you have. That's the, the size of the bubble. Then the last series of yellows that we're seeing right here is just telling us the IMU, the main computer, is still cold. What I mean by cold is actually a physical thing. It's a physical, it's not warmed up yet. So if it's 24 degrees out here, you may look at that yellow for a little longer than we'll look at it this morning. So you know, I think it's probably already gone. Okay, well, not yet, but it's getting there. Okay, so what we have to do you to- You loaded the foam firmware. I loaded the firmware, but I didn't calibrate the compass. Okay, so- IMU, yeah. yeah. That's IOC, and I did do that. I did turn on IOC, Intelligent Orientation Control. Um, but we'll worry about that a little bit later because that's kind of confusing compared to everything else. <laughs> okay, so anytime you travel or move in San Diego, it's about 150 miles, you go to a different degree of longitude and latitude. So what we have to do is we have to calibrate the compass uh, to the position that we're at to make sure that the magnetic deviation lines up with the GPS deviation. So, uh, in this in this case, if we settle it, and you're, where, are you, where are you located? Uh, Scripps Ranch. Scripps Ranch. Mm -hmm. As long as anywhere in San Diego County, you won't need to mess with it. What happens is, is as you further out you get, again, your bubble gets a little bit bigger. So if you go someplace, let's say you head out to Imperial County, and you're flying out in Imperial County, you can take off and launch, but if it finds itself falling off a little bit, yeah, calibrate the compass and just correct that magnetic deviation. And that's real that simple. Take it doesn't, it's 10 clicks of this switch. And what we'll do is we'll watch, see now the yellow's all gone, so it's warmed up. Okay. So we'll do 10 clicks of the switch and we'll get an indicator that it's ready to calibrate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. There we go. So, to calibrate the compass, we do a 360 level. So, I'll walk around. I'll do a 360. And right when I get to 360, the light will change. I go nose down and I do it again. And I'm just going 360 degrees on the compass. When I get 360 degrees, it blinks. Now we're calibrated. So, now we are perfectly calibrated. And the fact that we get one green blink and then three or four multiple green blinks tells us that if I throttle up and take off, here's home. Now if I walk out there and set it on the ground, throttle up and take off, that's gonna be home. The multiple green blinks is telling you I'm ready to know where home is when you take off. So if we went out there and took off and you turned the radio off, it would come right back to that location, okay? I so, guess you don't really want to take off here. Well, you know, uh, yeah, uh, we've, we've, well, well, it's actually quite easy, but the kicker becomes is that, uh, you know, the club has rules about flying over the pits and things like that. So, yeah, you don't necessarily, go ahead, yep. There's kind of stuff in there. Yep, and that's why the lid has a little bit of a gap to it, so you can get everything in there. All right, so here we are. We're technically all ready to go, and you watch those videos, right? Yeah. You took a look. So, so I'm not talking completely out of uh, out of what you've already noticed. So, you might want to go here, you want to walk over. Let's walk over to the help. Oh, wait, you have a video? You want to run the video? Yeah, I might as well. Okay, uh, cool. Go ahead and set it out over this way. And... and normally what I like to do is kind of set it out a few feet back because just like that, our bubble, put a put a five foot circle on the ground and if it comes home, it's gonna come home within that five foot circle. And if we put it right here, well the five foot circle may be here, five foot circle may be here, so right there is real good. So what we have to do to, in to initialize or make it live, because see right now if I do throttle, nothing happens, is put both sticks together and down. Now if I don't do anything for three seconds, it knows it's not flying and shuts off. 
So if I want to take off, I have to initialize and give it a little bit of throttle so, so I can be ready to go. Because if I go to zero throttle, it'll shut off after three seconds. If you're flying and you go to zero throttle, it will not shut off. It will just descend at its fastest rate. And, and you know, a couple guys have bounced them on the ground and they don't, they don't break, but that's kind, of a high, <laughs> that's kind of a high rate of descent, okay? So as you're, uh, go ahead and take the transmitter. As you're doing your first few flights, what I want you to do is I want you to maintain that you can see the back of this light. That way, as long as you can see the light, whatever this stick does is exactly relational to this. If you lean the stick this way, it goes this way. This, the, the forward is out, back is toward you. Once you turn around, it's gonna be different. So as you're learning, now you have a little bit of helicopter experience, right? You have a little uh, couple, a, a little toy. MQS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you've got a little bit of that. So as you take off, you know, you use, use your rudder to maintain this kind of squared up configuration. That way the, the sticks are always going the way you want to. But, you know, you'll we'll play a little bit like this, and then as you get better, start working on a figure eight. And what I mean by a figure eight is kind of like a lazy figure eight. So you'll go back and forth this way, and you'll kind of get the hang of it. Then you'll set, turn it like this, and just a little bit of this. You know what I mean? Just And then as you get better, you're turning more. And pretty soon, you're turning the full figure eight. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So it's if, if you're looking at this light, the stick is always going to be exactly what it does, meaning you pull back, it's going to come back to you. So that's kind of the, as you're starting, maintain that visual contact on that thing, and if you pull back, it's going to come back, always. So, but the, the difference between any multi-rotor and any helicopter is that once a helicopter's on the ground and you start throttling up, a helicopter gets light on the skids. And when it's really light on the skids, you could slide it around and you can do that. You can't do that with these. These, you need to step up and you need to sit down when it's time to land. So knowing that, at any, when that stick is at 50%, this thing's hovering. So if you're 150 feet up and you want to hover, don't, be, don't hesitate to take your eyes off the bird and make sure that stick is 50% and it's going to hover there. And that doesn't matter if you got a camera on it. One battery, five batteries, 50% is hover. Throttle's intelligent, so it knows it knows that it doesn't want to go up or down. So when you go to take off, you have to initialize, give yourself a little bit of throttle, take your breath, make sure you're ready to go, and then you kind of have to get past 50% so it's lifting off. But don't, don't delay, and I'll do a takeoff and I'll show you. Don't delay because if you try to lift off gently, what happens is, is that the wind's coming from this way, it's gonna to wanna to lean into the wind to hold still, right? To hold its position. And if it wants to lean into the wind, it'll stick this thing under. And these, the system calibrates motor RPM 300 times a second. So before you can blink, it's just gonna flip over. Wow. So, so step up, you know, don't, don't try to be gentle and smooth. Don't, don't feel bad about stepping up and getting off the ground. And I'll show you. Fast chip. Yeah, oh yeah, very fast. So I'll initialize and I'll just go right up. There, and now I'm flying. You, you, heard, you heard the motor, and then when I sit down, I hit zero throttle right as it touches the ground. So you heard the motor, I was I was just a little bit, just enough to get it off the ground. Instead of trying to gradually find 50%, I just push right through it. And even if that means this, watch, I'll show you like too much. Okay, I still have plenty of time to stop it. You know what I mean? And then like right here, 50%, I'm not touching it, and there's your bubble. There's your bubble right there. So we calibrated it. Like I said, it could be a one meter bubble or a two meter bubble. Right now we're probably working on about four inches. Right? It's nice and tight. So when I go to land, I'm going to establish a rate of descent and maintain that rate of descent until it touches the ground. And this is me playing around. Uh, I'm going to establish that rate of descent and manage it. And the second it hits the ground, I'm going to be at zero throttle. So I'm going to start down. There we go. And I'm not even going to touch it. It's going down. As soon as it touches the ground, zero. Okay, I hit it an inch high off the ground, that kind of thing. Okay. But it's that same philosophy of step up and sit down. Um, so when you, it sits a while, do you have to reinitialize? Well, yeah, time? It, it, yes. It, every, every, time? every time the motors come to a stop, oh, you, you, do you have, have to reinitialize okay. it, absolutely. Okay. So go ahead, initialize it. There you go. And don't draw a lot up. There you go. Try to push out a little bit, push out to the, to the edge of the, there you go. Stay here. <laughs> now, try a little bit of that uh, left thumb to square up the, 
the, so there you go. There you go. See? There. Now, so you're always looking at it for completely square. But it's doing its thing. Exactly correct. So a little bit of left is that, a little bit of right is that. And notice it didn't really lose any altitude when you did that. Where a helicopter, I mean, you'd have to power up because it would want to fall out of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, huh? No, uh, anything now. They're telling me anything. Matter of fact, I know for a fact that you got big, more in reserve for me, huh? I have, uh, I have 200 batteries coming. So absolutely. Okay, hold up right there. Square it up so you're looking at the back. There you go. There you go. Well, the wind's blowing. Push it on the floor. There you go. Well, you know, it's just, it, you know, it's kind of, it's our, it's May. It's May. Try to be a little soft on those sticks. It'll, it'll, be, it'll, it'll show you exactly what you're doing on those sticks. Yep. And then, of course, at any point in time, just like this, and let me have the transmitter and I'll show you. If any point in time you get mixed up, watch, I'm going to go out there and like, oh my god, I'm mixed up. All I do is let go. All I do is let go. And it will settle down and it'll stop and I'm 50%, so it'll hover. So now all I have to do is pull back on the stick. Easy. It's way too easy. <laughs> well, that's kind of the kicker that people think that, that once they get crossed up or mixed up, they think they have to keep flying. No, just stop. Just stop. And it'll 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 catch the edge of that bubble and it'll settle down for you. Okay, I'll bring it back in front of you for you. Uh, no, it doesn't, but you get blinking red lights when you're out of battery. Blinking red? Yeah, so when it starts to blink red, you know you're out of battery. Let's take a step back here. Uh, how long does it uh, take to charge those batteries? Um, it'll, um, with that trickle charger that it gives you, it'll take an hour. With your high-tech charger, you can get it done in about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had four batteries or five batteries in that charger, you can fly constantly. So, I mean, your, your batteries will be charged by the time you're done with the other one that you just used up. Sure, absolutely. Just establish a rate of descent. Not quite so much. There you go, nice and soft. And then as soon as it touches, zero problem. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Were you that good with your helicopter the first no. time? Exactly. No Nobody is, man. Well, it's a disaster. Yeah, you know. Disaster. <laughs> exactly. Nobody is. That's the beauty of these things. Yeah. It literally becomes, you know, that kind of thing. So go ahead. Initialize. How many minutes do you think this has been? Oh, we've been three minutes, maybe. Well, up. Get it. There you go. Beautiful. Now that's the takeoff. I have I've struggled with that with more people than you understand. They want to go off soft and clean go. Now you work that you gotta step up. Moment. Right, right, right. You gotta step up and get going. You did a good job flying that. You did a great job. No, really. It, it, it's, it's in that bubble. It's in that bubble. And that bubble is a three-dimensional bubble, so it may come down a foot or two, it may go up a foot or two. Oh, this would be great. Great for photography, all right. Amazing. Wait till you put your camera on, you'll be all so happy. I don't want to buy that gimbal. Oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting it, that's for sure. Oh my gosh, I'll have the first one. I had the first Phantom, because I'm the distributor. I had the first Phantom in the USA. I will have the first Zenny. How much do you think it's going to be? And then I'll still be full. So that's just So this is just a I'll probably buy it. Yeah, that, that case that, or that tray that's with it for the GoPro, don't use it. Use the one that comes with the GoPro. Okay. Because that one, you'll get more vibration out of that one. Yeah, it's really blowing and it ain't going nowhere. Wow. <laughs> that's right. No, so you've okay. had it out in much stronger. Oh, yeah. Like oh, so absolutely. It's not I've had it in 30 mile an hour winds and it still holds still. Okay, remember, if you ever get in trouble, just let go, and it'll settle down. <laughs> wow, Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. So it does drop a little when you know... Uh, yeah, but what happens is, is as it drops, it knows it's going to drop, so it will apply power and climb back up to that altitude. Yeah, it will, it, you know, it, like I said, it's the bubble. It's within that bubble. It may uh -huh. come down a little bit, it may go up a little bit, but the, the stronger the hold, the smaller that bubble. So does it keep its firmware pretty good? You know, I've man. never had to redo a firmware. Never, never had to redo a firmware. 
The only time we do uh, redo a firmware is when that, they have a change uh, and someone wants to change uh, it. Last night I noticed the latest one was grayed out or you yes. couldn't download no, it. No, you know why? Because it was released with it. With a bug in it? No, not with a bug. It was released, okay. They turned um, this, the, your GPS switch has GPS and then two Addies. And the difference is, is that they want to make that bottom selection the, uh, automatic return to home. And what they did is they made two changes to the firmware. One was the takeoff assistant, and then the other one was the return to home. And you couldn't select which one you wanted. So in order to have return to home, you had to have the takeoff assistant, and it's a pain in the butt. It's a, nobody liked the takeoff assistant, so they just pulled it off, and they're going to reconfigure it. They'll come out with 3.5, I'm sure. Yeah. But I still fly on the very first version. I, I'm, I'm pleased with the very first version. And you see it, it leans into the wind, and it holds right there. Amazing. But see, that's the problem with taking off softly. As you take off, it wants to lean into the wind, and that foot catches, and it'll just, it just flips over before you can do anything. So you got to step up and let it land okay. And just oh, absolutely. Okay. Same way. Establish your rate of descent. Whoa, careful. Beautiful. <laughs> that was a good catch. That was a good yeah, catch. I crashed my little ones. In fact, I got, I've gone in trees too many times. Okay. Mentioned. The, the kicker with this is that that's your, your primary, as you're learning, your primary flight consideration is rate of descent. You don't care how fast it goes up. You don't care how fast it's going forward. You care about how fast it's coming down. This will be intuitive when I start to sway it all, is it yeah. all the way down at no. home. Yes. And, and want me to show you how that works? Home okay. Lock. I'll show you how a home lock works. Now, we took off Which is the most likely when I want Well, home lock is good if you are so far out that you can't tell orientation. You know what I mean? Like, say you're out by those trees and you can't tell which direction it's facing. Because if you can't tell what direction it's facing, you go to home lock, anywhere you're at, this is bringing home. So the difference between horse lock and home lock is horse lock is like a piece of graph paper. Lay the graph paper down out the field, and that's what you're working with in that grid. Forward, left, right, it doesn't matter which way it's facing. It's facing this way, forward is still going to be that way. It's on the grid. Now, home lock is more of a bullseye style grid where it's round. So all roads lead to home. Whereas if I was all the way down there and I clicked course lock and pulled it back, it would come back down there or come back down there. Home lock, it would come diagonally to me. Well, that's, and that's why I turn it on. So what I'll do is I'll go, I'll go up further out here and I will show that at this point in time, we are this direction. Oh, I took off the home lock. <laughs> okay, so we're facing this direction, but if I pull back on the stick, it still comes to me. Like I took off the wrong way, that's why. I took off the home lock. The difference becomes is that you have to uh, establish a reference location. Uh, what I mean by a reference location is that we're taking off here. Yes. If I fly out to the edge of the runway, and you have to be 30 feet away for it to work, at least 30 feet. If I fly out to the end, edge of the runway and turn it on, if you draw a line between those two points, that becomes the reference line. Okay. So my grid would be like this. My, my yeah. grid lock is like this. Now, gotcha. if I took off and went over there, my grid is now angled. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. So that's what. Into, so, and where, where, where's the positioning? Off, one. course lock, home lock. All the way down. Oh, all the way down. Yeah. So, okay. so that kind of becomes your, that, that, that's a good example. That kind of becomes your, okay, I don't know what it is. Let me come home. It's this down, this down, and it comes home. So I'll take off. I'll go straight out to the edge of the runway. And now that I'm out from where I took off at a different place, I turn on, turn on course lock. And course lock, it doesn't matter which way I'm going. Like I can go this direction and it, it doesn't care. I can 360 rotate and it's just gonna hold that same line. Now if I go to home lock, pull the stick toward me and it comes home. Cool. Pull the stick toward me and it comes home. Doesn't cool. matter what direction it's facing, you see it coming back. But once it gets close to 30 feet, it'll turn it off. I turned it off because I knew where I was. So one of the things that I always do, and you see even me, even if I'm flying around like this, once I say I'm coming in to land, once I even even if I'm nose in, once I come in right here, I always still turn it around and land looking at the back because that way my stick is always doing exactly what I want it to do. You know what I mean? It's always forward is forward, always left is left. I establish my rate of descent and set it down. Uh -huh. Cool. Now, oh, is that the, uh, in the center? Yeah, no, no. This is always in GPS. GPS, 
yeah. is with the GPS holding, right. and then these two are the Addies, and the, the firmware oh, they're change, the same? they're both the same. The firmware change made this to return to home. So they right. took that out right. because now it was both, wrong. Both positions now they're, are the it, same. Exactly, it doesn't matter anything. So the difference between GPS and Addy is that it still flies the exact same. I'll take off, I'll get out here. Now I'm in GPS hold, so at 50% throttle, it's not gonna go anywhere. If I turn on Addy mode, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the wind. It, what you're going to see is you're going to see the wind speed. So if I turn off Addy, see it's holding, I go to Addy, look, there it is, just drifting with the wind. But it's still flying. Yeah. I turn GPS back on, and it holds. Keeps it level. It's that's right. It, it still controls attitude, that's what Addy means, but it, it's not holding a position. So now I'm kind of flying back sideways with GPS. It's I'll still look. fairly easy to fly. Oh, yeah. it's crazy to easy to fly. Uh, I think it's still in good shape, huh? Oh, yeah. The battery? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we really haven't done any high speeds, and this is the first time that battery's been charged. Good take-off. Good take-off. I tell you, I'm pretty much going to get some guys. I'm getting some guys. I'm just trying to look at it. Yeah. You had some access before. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, intimidating. yeah. <laughs> it's intimidating. It's intimidating. I got 600 bucks in the air, man! <laughs> I don't want to put this in a tree. No. It's just rent. I got so many yeah, yeah. trees yeah. in my house. Well, and that's a, uh, that's a good uh, thing to mention. In there. If you turn the radio off to do the emergency return to home, it'll stop, climb to 60 feet, come home, stop, and then come straight down. It knows it needs to clear trees or houses or that kind of thing. So if the blades do hit a tree... Uh, well, you have a stair set. You have a stair set? Yeah. Does, do they stop or what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not a gear drive. It's a brushless drive. So that you, you know, I've nicked my... I've stuck my finger in one and it can cut my finger off. It doesn't burn out the end. No, not at all. There's no brushes. Exactly correct. That's one of the beauties about this one. It really is quality components out of the box. Oh, it can drop pretty fast. That's oh, sure it can. The other one, the small one, it, it can't drop that yeah. fast. Yeah. Put it in the top of the <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. If you if, if you if you can, if you if you commit to a turn, maintain it and go all the way around. Don't stop halfway. If you start to a turn, go all the way around to where you're looking at the back of it again. Yep. Red yep. Those green lights in the back, they stay on all the time. And the red ones in the front. Yep. You can fly this at night. Oh, yeah. Well, not as much. You can, you can, they're on. You can tell they're, they're on. Damn. Yeah. Oh, at nighttime. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. At nighttime, you can fly it at night with just these lights. Yeah. Ooh, they're starting to fade. Starting to fade. Yeah, starting to fade. Well, here's a trick that we've done out here. Okay, there's your red light. Okay. So, But notice it was only on throttle. So that was just your first indicator. So you still have a couple minutes left. But my kicker is, is let, me, let me show you, is that when you if you get out there and you don't know orientation, put the nose down and then rudder it around. See what I'm saying? You know which way it's going by the fact that you're just leaning forward and then come back and stop. So that's what, I've, uh, that's what I teach people is that if you're out there so far and you don't know orientation, just put the nose down and you know which way the front is. And that's about it. So I'm gonna let you have it. I'll let you have it and let you bring it back to land. Because we're about, you know, we're getting red, that's the red flashing that our light there. So now that we're getting there, it's telling us it's time to land. Yep. Now you get two, Two warnings other than the red light. And I'll let you land and I'll tell you what those are. Beautiful land. Beautiful land. And it'll 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 de-energize. Okay, don't, 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 yeah, don't do that. Right. So the kicker is is that when you have your your first warning is the blinking red light. Now if you're so far away that you can't see the blinking red light. No, it doesn't hurt at all. Because look, even right now, I I can't turn it on. Because once you de-energized it. Can't turn it on. Come on back to the table over here. So the first, the first warning for low battery is wait for a lot. Now, remember, just the second warning. 